Tadashevich wanting somebody to go on. Chaubert, Chekhanovsky. Stopped by Walker. Oh! Thumping drive and turned away by Peter Shilton. Really, that was hugely well struck. And a very good save. That's curling. It was comfortably headed out. Follow-up shot from McMahon wasn't too bad, was it? Brodsky. Ashika, it's a good cross and a good save. Chikanovsky again with a header. What a nice move, and they certainly got round the back then. Ashika. Tarashevich. Great strike from Kazmarek. Space here for Christoph Ashika. Tchaikovsky takes over, looks for the curler. Another good stop by Peter Shilton. And Robson with the header. The touch from Lineker straight into the waiting arms of backup. That's on the right side, he came off the crossbar. Shilton beaten for the first time, and he came rattling back off the crossbar. So England qualified for Italy without conceding a goal, a record no other European country can match. Not even Sweden in the yellow shirts here, who twice kept England out, but whose goalkeeper Thomas Ravelli gave away that early penalty against Albania in red in Stockholm last weekend. The scorer after eight minutes was Kushta. A shock in store perhaps, but the Swedes avoided possible humiliation when Mats Magnussen, who missed that last minute gilt edge chance against England last month, made amends with the equaliser here after 20 minutes on the near post some relief for Magnussen and for Sweden. Early in the second half, the Swedes took control of the game. And after 55 minutes, a swift move down the right saw Roland Nielsen and Johnny Ekstrom combining to set up the opening for Klaas Ingersen, Sweden's promising young midfield player, to put them 2-1 up. So, just as they had in Albania, Sweden had come from behind. And just a minute from the end, they made the point safe. Another clever move down the right-hand side, ending with a goal for Leif Enquist. And making the final score in Stockholm, Sweden 3, Albania 1. So it means that in Group 2, Sweden go to Poland on Wednesday week, knowing a draw would ensure their qualification. But if they win, then they pip England for leadership of the group. Shooting with the second corner. Away by Whiteside. Whelan beautifully played out to Sheedy. Inviting left foot. Cascarino! <laughs> Morris Townsend looks around and finds that he's got space and time. Sheedy. Houghton. Oh, beautiful goal. 3-0. People here are celebrating what yeah. they see as qualification. Are well, you I would have looked to join them, but I, you can't celebrate until it's finished and finalised and you're there. I mean, England drew tonight and they're there. Yeah. Spain, who could have ensured Ireland's qualification by winning in Hungary, were ahead in Budapest through Salinas on the half hour. And when, after two misses by Mancio, Mitchell following up scored Spain's second in the 39th minute, the group seemed to have been decided. But not a bit of it. Pintar put Hungary back in the game before half-time. And then, eight minutes from the end of the contest, the same player struck the equaliser. Indeed, one of the best goals of the evening. But it leaves Jack Charlton's team needing a point in Malta to be sure 
though their goal difference would surely be enough to deny Hungary. In Paris, Scotland's vast army of travelling supporters were hoping to see them take the one point they required to qualify for the finals. But it was the French who went ahead after 25 minutes through Deschamps, who beat Jim Layton inside the near post. On the play, Scotland were rather unlucky to be one down at half-time, especially as in the first half, Ali McCoist hit the crossbar. The second half now, and when France had fullback Di Melo sent off, for his second foul, it seemed that Scotland might be back in business. But, as against Uruguay in Mexico, they failed to take advantage of the extra man. And it was the French who scored again through Eric Cantona after 61 minutes. Then, a minute from the end, following this corner, Durand's shot was deflected past Jim Layton to complete Scotland's misery. The deflection off Steve Nicholl, the final score, 3-0 to France. Meantime, in Sarajevo, Yugoslavia, in the blue shirts, who've already won Scotland's group, lost one of their best players against Norway when Mehmet Bazdarevic was sent off after 15 minutes. The offence, apparently, was spitting at the Turkish referee. And the man in black was certainly at the centre of the action and of the controversy throughout the match. Here, he disallowed a Norwegian goal, presumably for a foul on goalkeeper Ivkovic, who seemed to overreact. So the Norwegians were doubly disappointed when the Turkish referee Namoglu gave a penalty for that alleged trip just a minute before half-time. The Norwegian goalkeeper here is Eric Torsvet of Tottenham Hotspur, but he couldn't prevent Hadzi Begic scoring from the spot for what proved to be the only goal of the game. 1-0 to Yugoslavia, and now Torsvet and Norway come to Hampden Park on November the 15th, with Scotland still needing one point to qualify for the finals for the fifth time running. will qualify if they take one point from their home match against Finland. West Germany may need to beat Wales on November the 15th. Portugal have had a busy five days. On Saturday, they find themselves up against ten men of Czechoslovakia, courtesy of Stanislav Grigia. Two yellow cards for two stupid challenges saw the Czechoslovakian sent off. Portuguese were a goal behind from a penalty. It was that sort of match. But when Futre was brought down on the edge of the area, apart from requiring the referee to get out the yellow card once again, it brought the equaliser, scored by Aguash. But another free kick by Belek gave Czechoslovakia the victory. So, come Wednesday, the Portuguese needed to win in Luxembourg to stay in contention. And this they did with some comfort, 3-0. Barros scoring their third after two earlier goals by Aguash. In Baal, meanwhile, Belgium were spurning their chance to ensure their place in the finals. They scored a delightfully worked goal through degrees, but were held by Switzerland 2-2. So at least they seem to be aware of things green, and with Luxembourg to play at home, shouldn't need to sweat too much. But Portugal against Czechoslovakia that could be quite warm.
In Karl Marxstadt, the Soviet Union in the red shirts must have thought they'd booked their place in Italy when Gennady Litovchenko, arguably now one of the best players in the world, put them ahead with that fine shot 15 minutes from the end against East Germany. But the absence of the Soviets' number one goalkeeper, Renat Desayev, cost them dear. That goal by Andreas Tom, the result of a bad error by his deputy Viktor Chanov. Even a point would have been enough for the Soviets, but that shot from Matthias Sommer gave East Germany victory two minutes later. And it means the East Germans have kept alive their hopes of qualifying at Austria's expense, while the Soviets need just a point from their home match with Turkey on the 8th of November. Kurt Nielsen of Aston Villa gave Denmark the start they sought against Romania, scoring after just four minutes. But the star of the show was Brian Laudrup, whose marker Radnik was eventually sent off. Laudrup's goal, Denmark's second, could surely not have been better by his more famous brother, Michael. Fleming Poulsen scored the Danes' third from Heinz's cross, and now they must avoid defeat in the return. Bulgaria and Greece were already out of contention, but their meeting had its moments, though not many to do with football. We were playing for our pride, said the Bulgarian manager. The result was a very busy night for the referee. In all, he sent off one Bulgarian and three Greeks. There were four goals as well, all of them for Bulgaria, including this soft dick. The Greeks presumably would have had words for it, but the final say in the group will come in Bucharest on November the 15th, when Romania are at home to Denmark. But of course England are in those finals, but a lot of people think there's still something wrong with the team, rather like the economy, but they don't know what to do with it. But we asked our leading football writers, and here they are, uh, from ten of the uh, major newspapers in this country, what they would do with the team. They've been uh, uh, Bobby Robson's harshest critics, some of them. So we said, well, what team would you like to take uh, to the World Cup finals next year? And you'll notice that the Sun have picked two men there, one for the longer names. No, only joking, chaps. Uh, but this is the team that they've come up with, the team that they would, on consensus, pick for those World Cup finals. Two new faces at the back, Paul Parker of QPR, preferred to Gary Stevens, a surprise at left back. Nigel Winterburn of Arsenal they've gone for, selected ahead of both Stuart Pearce and Tony DiRigo. Uh, the football writers want Rowcastle and McMahon to play alongside Robson in midfield, and they have a clear preference for Barnes ahead of Waddle. Only three votes for the former Spurs player. And interesting, too, that Des Walker of Nottingham Forest is one of five players selected by all 11 journalists. The others, Shilton, Butcher, Robson, and Lineker.